Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. I'm joined here today by defenseman of the Vermont women's hockey team, Cam Morrissey. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast, Cam, and how's everything going? Thanks for having me. All's well. Um, happy Christmas Eve Eve. It's a snowy day here in Vermont. Um, how are things with you? Things are going well, you know. I'm excited for the holidays, and it's good that college hockey's been back up for the past month now, so it's been fun watching those games. And it has been a bit cold, but I'm more of a winter person sometimes, so I can respect <laughs> it a little bit. Sure. Now, I want to start off talking a little bit about your weekend series you had last weekend against New Hampshire. Uh, you split that series. Uh, what did you take away from your first few games against that team and you're just that overall series in general? Um, I think it was – it was good overall. I think there were a lot of emotions and it was a little bit, I think, nerve wracking for us going into it because UNH had played like quite a few games already. And those were, like you said, like our opening games, like we hadn't um, had any like real games under our belt. We had a few like inner squad scrimmages, but besides that, like it was kind of our first time in, I don't know, maybe 10 months, like actually playing a real game. So I think going into it, like, especially the first game, everyone was so, like, anxious and, like, nervous and excited, of course, too, but um, definitely a lot of emotions. And, you know, obviously I think a sweep would have been nicer, but um, I think we were pretty happy to walk away with a split against a good team. So, yeah. Yeah, and how are you going to use that win for motivation for the rest of the year? And how important was that win for your team? I think especially it being our first – game like it was huge like having that momentum and kind of just that uh confirmation that like okay like we have a legit team here that can do some damage and um our freshmen like played insane I think all three of them had points um and obviously like that's huge like their first college games and everything and I think like moving forward we kind of realized or we are realizing that you know we can't be like satisfied with one win and, you know, we have to go away, leave that first game, like wanting more the second day. Um, But yeah, no, it was huge having that first win. kind of excited to see how the rest of the season turns out for us. Yeah. You had a little bit of a delay to start the year. Um, What did you do during that delay to help uh, for your first two games? And was it tough having that delay to start off your season, especially since a lot of hockey East teams already played their first few games just before you did? Right. Yeah. It was super frustrating. Um, I think from a player standpoint, like it was definitely tough, just, you know, we're trying to do everything right. We get tested three times a week, you know, or showing up for practice every single day, like anticipating. And we found out um, literally like the Sunday before we were supposed to like play UConn that next weekend. And I think everyone was like really crushed at first. Um, But, you know, at the end of the day, we kind of just realized like, we just have to have faith that we are going to end up having a season and playing games. Um, but it definitely sucked. Like, especially, you know, the girls hockey world is so small. Like, obviously I know a ton of other girls in hockey East and have friends on um, teams that we play and, you know, seeing their social medias and seeing everyone playing, like it definitely sucked. Like realizing like, geez, they're not going to play for another. I think it was like a two week delay. I want to say maybe even longer, but um yeah, I'm glad like we finally got the chance to play and I think everyone was so excited um, just to finally like actually hit the ice for some games and not just practice. Yeah, especially since there's some schools, especially in the Ivy League, that don't even get to play a season and I feel bad for especially the seniors knowing that they played their final college hockey game like their junior year. Yeah, yeah definitely. I can't imagine. I know um, – We like meet usually like around once a week with our team sports psychologists and usually we like end the session like talking about something we're grateful for and so many of the seniors were just kind of like we're just so grateful to have the opportunity to you know play like just because there are so many teams um, like in the ECAC that you know don't have a season so yeah definitely. Now what would you say is the biggest improvement you made to your game since your freshman season? I think, um, I think freshman year, like, obviously I feel like it's this way with all freshmen, but you come in with a lot of like unknowns and you don't really know like your role or your place or anything like that. But, um, 
I think kind of like having the year to kind of like understand our team's like systems and, you know, our D zone, O zone plays, like just tactical stuff, like face offs, like just kind of like knowing that stuff and having experience from like executing it for a year. Like, I think that definitely like makes a difference coming in to a second year, but yeah. Now there's obviously no fans in the stands for this hockey season. Has that been an adjustment for yourself and what's it like playing without any fans and how do you try to bring the energy on the ice without any crowd noise? Yeah, it's, it's definitely weird. Um, I think one thing, well, the athletic department at UVM kind of started this thing where they would print like cutouts of like family members. Like I'm sure like other teams are kind of doing similar yeah, things. Them. Oh, right. Um, sure. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. So like we have some cutouts of fans and stuff in the rink, which weirdly actually kind of like makes a difference. I feel like it's kind of cool, like seeing people's faces in the stands, even if they're not really there. Um, but yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, I think like all of us kind of have to be responsible for like maintaining like high energy, especially on the bench and stuff. And um, it is definitely weird though. And I can't imagine, I mean, obviously like, women's hockey is nowhere near like the attendance levels of like men's hockey but I can't imagine for some of the men's players who you know usually they sell out like our arena half the time I, it's going to be a big adjustment for them I think even more than us yeah those cutouts I never really noticed them watching the game but I guess they could make a difference as a player but I, I didn't think they would make a difference so it's kind of cool to hear that from your perspective how it feels like there's some people in the crowd even though there's yeah yeah now, you've also, like I talked about earlier, you had a delay to start your year, but there's also going to be probably many schedule adjustments that are going to be made throughout the rest of the year. Um, how do you view mentally stay prepared for those changes in your schedule and those postponements that could come this year as well? And how do you try to stay flexible for that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm sure you can agree. Like, I feel like one thing that every single person has had to take away from these past, like, nine months since COVID started, like, it, things change like so quickly and you really have to learn to adjust to absolutely everything that's kind of thrown your way. Um, so I think our team kind of has just really been working on like staying positive and staying like aware that, you know, things might change and our coaches and athletic directors have kind of like made similar comments, just being like, look, like no one knows how this year is going to go. Um, you guys have to be, understanding and like willing to adapt to whatever kind of gets thrown your way but um I mean like you said like obviously we had to deal with that with the season being postponed but um or delayed but I think it's definitely just a matter of like realizing that it's seriously like out of your hands and just out of your control. Now another thing that was introduced to college hockey this year was three on three overtime um, I know you haven't played in one yet, but how excited are you to be in one potentially? And I know as a fan, it's so much fun to watch, but since you've never played one, in, played in one in college hockey, how are you willing to adjust to that? And how excited are you to play in a three and three overtime? Yeah, I think it's super cool. Um, I'm actually so glad like they started doing that. And obviously like in the NHL, you could see like how fun it was for them. And um, we did have like when we had our, we had two like inner squad scrimmages that were, made to be pretty realistic like we had refs and everything and um, we did play like some 3v3 overtime in those and I think it's just like so fun to play with so much open ice and so much time um, it's definitely like a different game which I think is cool and I can't wait to like see how our team like performs in 3v3 because I think we have some really skilled players and fast players who can kind of take advantage of all that open ice but yeah super cool yeah, Vermont will definitely be a good team on three and three. I can definitely see you saucing a pass to Val Caldwell and scoring the game winner. So I, that would definitely be fun to watch. No, but oh, as yeah. a fan, it's fun to watch three and three because last year in college hockey, that was the one complaint I really had was whenever it was overtime, it was just kind of boring to watch because just a lot of icing, four and four, and there wasn't a lot of chances. And as a viewer for our product, it was kind of unappealing to watch. But the changes definitely made an impact because there's a lot of skilled hockey players in college hockey and it's cool that the three and three overtime is showing off their abilities to especially offensively to show their skating abilities and their shot ability as well yeah definitely for sure now you were talking about how good your freshman class played last weekend how have the freshman class looked like so far other than that weekend and how have they adapted to the team since they're in a situation that no one else in the team has experienced before and how have you tried to help them for their transition into college hockey Right. Yeah, it's I think our freshmen have done a phenomenal job kind of like just 
dealing with everything that's been kind of thrown their way. I think, um, I think it was beneficial to them with kind of like the delay in the season. Like they really got a ton of time to like practice. And um, I'm sure like other teams or other players you might've talked to, like have been in similar or in similar situations, but like we had to start out in super small pods, like super tiny groups where we were doing, you know, really like skill-based work and skill-based drills where we were kind of just, you know, getting used to coming back on the ice. Cause I think a lot of, um, a lot of players like didn't really get a ton of time on the ice, maybe not as much as they're used to this summer, obviously with COVID regulations, but I think it was kind of nice for them um, just kind of getting to start out in those small groups. So they weren't, you know, cause it's pretty overwhelming, like be your first college practice and you're around the entire team, 20 plus girls and coaches. So I think the small groups really helped. Um, I did feel bad though, because I think our team does a lot of like team bonding activities and stuff and kind of like big group stuff before the season actually starts. And it's a bummer that they kind of missed out on that stuff. But I mean, there's three more years of that in store for them. So I'm sure they'll still get to experience it. And they've already adjusted so quickly and like I said played so well the first weekend and I think everyone was really impressed with them so yeah. Do you think the adjustment for them is going to be a lot quicker than the adjustment that your class had to face since they got to learn the system much more I guess they had more time to learn the system than the juniors seniors and sophomore classes got to. Right um I don't know I I think it kind of there's like pros and cons to the fact that you know our season was delayed and they weren't able to kind of or they were able to kind of have that extra time. Um, again, like being in the pods in the beginning, we really didn't do a lot of like system work at all, you know, just cause there would, you know, be groups of like five of us out there. So um, I wouldn't say it was like super different, but I think they've all done like such a good job of picking everything up quickly and, you know, learning the plays, the face-offs, all that fun stuff. So, yeah. Now what are your goals and expectations for yourself and the rest of your team for the rest of this season? I think um, from a team standpoint, like actually our coach was saying on the ice today, he's, you know, our coaches are saying a lot this year, you know, this is a special group. This is like a group that we haven't had before at Vermont. And I think everyone's like really excited about the group of girls we have. And he was telling us today, you know, if you guys want to do something you've never done before, we've got to do things that we've never done before. And I think, um, kind of our team's goals obviously and it's a unique year as far as like hockey east everyone makes playoffs this year so I think kind of like working towards advancing in the tournament and um, succeeding in hockey East playoffs would be huge for us obviously last year like coming up short in our first like weekend against northeastern like that sucked Um, and as far as myself I think just continuing to improve and work hard and kind of deal with all these COVID situations as they come, but um, just continuing to have fun with everyone. We have a really fun group of girls and it's been a blast like working with them. So just continuing with that. Now as a player, are you happy about every team making the playoffs in college and hockey's? Because I know that's part of the fun as a fan to watch is seeing which teams might or might not make it in as a player. Are you a little happy that you have that like sense of urgency released from you knowing that you're going to make the playoffs at the end of the day? Yeah, I think it kind of goes both ways. We were actually talking about this as a team the other day. Like, I think we can't, as a team, use it as an excuse to kind of, like, take our foot off the gas pedal because, you know, obviously with our season, it's already going to be shortened. Um, And so I think, like, every game just means that much more and is that much more important. And even if we are automatically, like, getting into the playoffs, we don't want to, you know, show up to our first game of – playoffs and be like geez now we got to pull it together you know so I think like our team has really tried to just have the mindset of you know every game is just that much more crucial this year and we want to be like ready and prepared when it comes to playoffs. Now how was your quarantine this summer and what did you do to prepare for this off uh, during what did you do to prepare for this season during the off season? I know it was a different off season uh, compared to most. Yeah it was definitely um, definitely very different Uh, I'm usually like in summer I'm used to skating like almost every day and that um, I'm from Michigan so we Michigan was hit pretty hard as far as like regulations and stuff like that with COVID we were shut down for quite a while Um, 
but honestly like it was nice my gym open that I train at like pretty early I would say I think we it opened in June and I was able to train there all summer as far as like lifting and conditioning and I work out with a group of guys who all play like juniors or college level hockey so they definitely uh, keep me on my toes and keep me working hard and then as far as skating like it was kind of tough like it was really weird like I'm, I'm so not used to like going that long without skating which was definitely tough and I'm sure other people have kind of had the same experience but it was kind of all about just finding like ice time wherever you can and trying to take advantage of every opportunity because it was really like ice time was so limited like especially where I'm from but um definitely a weird year but besides that it was it was kind of nice like I have two younger brothers who um I got to spend a lot of time with which was awesome and I left home when I right after I turned 16 so I think like being home for that long of a break was kind of nice as well just because I kind of been away for such a long time but yeah yeah, was it like for working out since you've had such a long off season compared to most, but it's kind of limited as well since gyms are very close, especially right. where you were from in Michigan. What did you do um, during that month where the gyms weren't open, like at home workouts? And how did you try to adapt to working out from home without the equipment that you're usually used to at a gym? Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely weird. I mean, I think uh, YouTube became a pretty good friend of mine because I was looking up like at home hockey workouts all the time. I got into kickboxing, which was kind of fun, kind of a good little cardio excuse, but it was, um, it was definitely like so weird not having, you know, just a place to go to every single morning. Like you, I definitely had to get creative and kind of figure out like ways to maintain like not only strength but also like that stamina you need for hockey and um like I mentioned like at least I had you know two brothers who also play hockey and um we kind of were able to do stuff together which at least made it a little more fun but yeah definitely weird not having the setup I'm used to well that's good to hear now I want to start off talking about the beginning of your hockey career you're from Michigan like you just said uh what was it like growing up there and how did you start playing hockey so it's actually kind of funny because I think a lot of people, I, I'm originally from California. Uh, my parents are from California and I moved to Ohio when I was pretty young. Um, and my parents both being from California were kind of like, what do you do in the winter? They like literally didn't know what we, because I, me and my brothers, they were kind of like, we have no idea what kids do in the winter because they're used to warm weather all the time. So they actually took me to the ice rink um, and at first I was a figure skater and I like loved it. I started, I think, skating when I was maybe like six um, and I didn't start actually playing hockey until I was, I want to say like 10 or 11. Like it was pretty late, I feel like compared to most players I know, but um, the background in figure skating actually I think was pretty beneficial as far as like transitioning to hockey. And uh, so, yeah, so I was in, I was playing boys in Ohio for quite a long time. And I think those are some of like the best years of my like hockey career. Like I just remember having so much fun and I had a great group of like guys that I played with and great coaching. And it was just like a really good way to start um, my career. And uh, eventually like I kind of started improving, like getting better, like realizing like this is something that I, you know, would want to do in college or beyond potentially. And um, I actually was went up to Michigan. I wasn't living there yet, but um, I went up to Michigan because, you know, there's not a lot of great hockey in Ohio. Um, Michigan has a much better like competitive pool of teams. And so I went up there, drove four hours to try out for a bunch of teams, like really had no idea like what I was getting myself into, but um, ended up making a, Little Caesars team, a AAA program there that's uh, pretty like historically successful. And I started playing for Little Caesars. Uh, I played there for two years and had an absolute blast. Like couldn't say anything more about the program. Um, it was tough though, because I was, you know, I was four hours away. So a lot of times, like I was lucky to have coaches who kind of 
let me drive up for like weekends or, you know, miss a lot of practices and kind of practice with boys at home, um, which is what I did for most of those two years. And I have an aunt and uncle who I ended up like living there, living with them when I was, I think, 15 um, for chunks of it you know, chunks of a time and just kind of staying with them so I could practice. So kind of like I left school as well. I started homeschooling. So kind of like sacrificed a lot um, during those years, but definitely like wouldn't change it. And, um, and then my junior and senior year, I decided to go to Selects Academy, um, spent two years there and that's out of Rochester, New York, and just had so much fun like playing there and, um, just a great program and I think they've they were relatively new at the time still are and I think they've um, grown a lot but yeah that's kind of where I've been over before college but yeah a lot of fun times and memories yeah and you who was your favorite player growing up I'm just curious and how um, do you ever use their part of their game do you try to implement their part of their game to your game a little bit so um, my parents like I said are from California and huge San Jose Sharks fans and so like naturally I grew up loving the Sharks and I don't even remember really like why I just loved Brent Burns like ever since I was little like thought he was just so cool and the most interesting person in NHL in my opinion absolutely (laughs) like so interesting and I just like for whatever reason I was just drawn to his game I think like just how I think it's kind of funny because he's such an offensive defenseman and he just kind of like does what he wants but is so successful at it and um yeah so he definitely is my favorite player and still is and it's actually pretty cool like I he played with a coach who I trained with for a short period of time and um when I committed to Vermont actually which was right at the start of my sophomore year he actually got Brent Burns to send me a video and it was a this video of Burnsy saying like hey Cam like congrats on your commitment to Vermont like continue working yada 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 but it was like one of the coolest moments of my life but yeah he's definitely my favorite um love the way he plays and I don't know I've always been a huge fan of him so yeah yeah the San Jose Sharks minor league hockey team used to be in Worcester where I grew up and I okay. remember Logan Couture was there and no one really knew about him before he was with the Sharks. And then like we saw him play before he went to San Jose and he was awesome. And it was cool just to see how successful he was in Worcester and then translate that to San Jose. But I don't think Brent Burns, I think he was drafted by the wild. So I don't think he ever came yes. by Worcester. Yeah. Yeah. My brother loves him. Huge fan. Are you still a Sharks fan today or do you don't really watch the NHL that much? I definitely um I'm a huge Sharks fan still like I think I always will be especially just because like my family is so into them but I definitely don't watch that much like NHL hockey I think like especially being in college it's kind of like I don't know it's hard to get access to games when you're in a dorm room or whatever but um definitely not as much as I think I did like growing up yeah now another thing I want to ask you was you were talking about how you grew up with two younger brothers who also played hockey. What was it like competing with them every day and helping your hockey development? Because I see that they are still in juniors right now playing. Yeah, um, it was awesome. I, they were actually the ones that got me into hockey because, like I mentioned, when I started figure skating, like they just went straight into hockey, and I think I was sick of watching them have so much fun and wanted to join. So I think they're kind of um, the reason I started and. It's fun, like especially I think admittedly as I've gotten older and they've gotten older and bigger and stronger, like they're definitely better than me now, which is frustrating, but definitely keeps me on my toes. And like we have so many fun memories. We used to have a synthetic like ice rink in my basement where we would go like play and shoot pucks and um that was always just a blast. And I think it's always just been such a huge part of our family. Um and you know traveling to tournaments and watching movies in the car like there's so many great memories with them and I think all three of us like that's something that we've always all done together so it's been awesome growing up and watching them grow as well yeah and uh, it just must be fun to see how successful they're doing in juniors seeing them how they started out in in your childhood as well yeah definitely so much fun and it makes me like I'm like the proudest big sister of them and it, it just like it's so fun for me to see them improve and 
um, especially like my middle brother, he's kind of going through like now the same process that I did as far as like recruiting and talking to colleges and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool being able to just watch them go through that process like I did. It's awesome. Yeah. I want to talk to you now about your experience at Selects Academy, like you were just talking about earlier. I'm just curious, how did that experience help prepare you for college hockey? Was it just having the time management skills with school and hockey? Because I know that's a big adjustment for many freshmen, but you kind of already had that experience a little bit with Selects, in my opinion, just from hearing your story. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, Selects is it literally like is designed to mirror a college hockey program. Um, I mean, we live in dorms. We, you know, are kind of on similar schedules as far as like we skate every single day. We practice, we work out, um, you know, and we play like a pretty long season and there's a lot of kind of resources available um, at selects to kind of like help you grow as a player. You know, they have like an awesome shooting room and um, just, it's very, very similar. I, I'd almost argue like sometimes it was more intense than my current like college hockey program and daily life. But I think it definitely kind of, you know, when I got to UVM and I was living by myself, living in a dorm, like going to practice every day, like that stuff was second nature to me. It was what I'd been used to for two years already. And, um, you know, when you're living with 39 other girls, they become a family to you. And I definitely, enjoyed my time there and miss all the memories made there. But yeah, it was an awesome experience for me and a great kind of segue into college hockey. Now, what was your recruiting process like and why did you choose Vermont at the end of the day? So I think um, I started talking to schools my freshman year of high school. And this was when I was still at Little Caesars. Um, I, I think I went on 10 visits total to different schools and kind of looking back on it, I think it was like stressful in the moment, but I kind of like remember like it, it was a lot of fun, like making memories and um, especially like with my mom, like driving all up the East Coast, like visiting schools with her and kind of getting to, you know, spend time with her and explore. And I think looking back, like it was, I was so young and it's kind of crazy to think like, geez, like what is a freshman slash sophomore like kid know what they want to do in four years. But um, I definitely like met a lot of great people through the process as far as like coaches and um, talking to, you know, different programs. And I'm kind of glad I visited like quite a few schools because I think I really kind of was able to see a wide variety of, you know, schools, leagues, programs, um, which helped me make my decision. But as far as Vermont, I think um, one of the biggest things that it kind of, that kind of like drew me to it was it's like extremely different from like the kind of area I grew up in. Um, I mean, you know, there's, it's beautiful here. There's mountains everywhere. It's very kind of like cool East Coast town. And obviously like growing up in the Midwest, like I don't even think besides being in California, I'd seen mountains before. Like coming to UVM um so I think just the in Burlington is like such a cool city like and I love that it's you know a mile from campus it's so easy to go like to get there and there's so much to do um it's cold which kind of sucks but you know the snow is pretty <laughs> but um I think the campus and the town definitely were something that like kind of attracted me and then um our the, the head coach Jim Plummer who I think I talked to pretty much the whole recruiting process like I did most of the um you know when I was getting recruited it was mostly through him um and Kelly Nash who's not here anymore but I think we definitely were able to kind of find out that we had like a lot in common and we kind of connected right away and have been able to kind of maintain a good relationship since then and um, so I think talking with him, like really helped me make that decision. And, um, you know, academically, like I'm a business major, they have a really good business program that kind of was also attractive to me at the time. And yeah, I think like it kind of just checked off a lot of boxes as far as what I was looking for, even though looking back, I'm kind of like, I was probably just basing 
my decision off which team had the coolest jerseys. Like I was so young, but <laughs> it's definitely, um, I'm glad I, you know, made that decision and, and stuck with it because I really love it here and have had a blast the past year and a half ish. So, yeah. Yeah. What's the coaching staff like at Vermont? How have they helped your hockey development, especially Jim Plummer? Because I've heard a lot of good things about how well he develops younger hockey players. Yeah. So Jim, um, Jim, I've known the longest. And like I said, we kind of first like connected when he was first recruiting me, but um, I think he is a really cool guy in the sense that he's very big on kind of like the mental side of things. And um, he kind of like really strives to have like a growth mindset, which I think is contagious when it comes to us as a team. Um, And I think he, has you know a lot of patience and a lot of poise and he kind of I think works really well with a lot of our players and I think he does puts in a lot of effort to make our program like the the program it is today um and so Jess Kazumi she is our like D coach so I work with her all the time but um she's great like she does you know like D skill sessions with me every week. Um, She's so into, you know, like developing the, you know, just kind of like making each of us like the best possible player. Like she does skill sessions with us constantly. She's always doing like video review with me and the other um, players. And I think she like, she, you can tell she loves like what she does and she's so passionate about hockey. And um, I mean, clearly had a really good career herself and um and then our other assistant coach Alex like can't say enough about the guy like he's just the greatest human like so always so positive and I think like just his energy is so contagious like especially like at practice like he's so much fun and um it's just been a blast getting to know him as well because he wasn't like I didn't really know him um when I was first getting recruited so it's been awesome like getting to work with him he's the greatest so yeah yeah that's awesome I have a lot of respect for Jess Kazumi because I remember watching her in her professional career and it's cool how she's translated her knowledge from that to college hockey and being a coach yeah definitely she's awesome she um I think she has definitely like and also like it's pretty impressive to me because she was a forward in her you know playing career but she like as a D coach I think offers like a lot of great like advice and tips and really like has kind of um been able to help us like tactically and um which is pretty impressive considering like her whole career she spent like playing forward would you ever consider being a coach at the end of your career um I think when I was younger I would say 100 percent like absolutely I think now that I've kind of gotten older and um I think like hockey's been such a huge part of my life obviously but I think um when I graduate like I just I don't know I I think uh I'd rather do something with my degree like follow a path like in business and um do something like outside of hockey just because I've spent so much time in that world um but yeah I, I I don't think personally I would coach unless it was I don't know, something that came up, but you never know. Yeah, you got two more years, but I was just curious because you've (laughs) had a lot of experience in juniors and then obviously in college as well. I was just wondering, since a lot of players might consider it, I was wondering if you can consider it, would consider it as well. Right. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your freshman year. Uh, What was the biggest adjustment you had to make uh, to college hockey? Uh, Was it the on-ice stuff, like making quicker decisions with the puck? Um, playing against players that were four years older than you were, or was it something off the ice trying to translate or balance the academic and hockey side as well? Um, I think definitely, like like you mentioned, you're playing with players or playing among players who are, you know, older, faster, bigger, stronger. Um, that was definitely an adjustment. You know, obviously, like the te- Hockey East is so competitive and every team is good and every team has good players that are like tough to compete with. So I would say like, definitely like that was, you know, a tricky adjustment. And um, I think also just like tactically college hockey is so much more of a like system based game. You know, I think growing up in youth hockey, like it's, you know, obviously there's systems and stuff, but I think like in plays, but 
um, nowhere near the level of like college hockey. Like it's so much more based on, you know, plays and systems and kind of like adjusting to that game, like realizing like, okay, I can't, you know, go do whatever I want when I'm on the ice. Like that's definitely an adjustment. And I think like, I think every freshman kind of goes through something similar, but I would say those two things are kind of like the main adjustments I had to make um, as a freshman. Yeah. And uh, speaking of last year, you guys lost to Northeastern in the quarterfinals. Uh, What did you take away from your first playoff experience in hockey? Because you guys seem to be stuck in eighth place throughout the entire year, at least to me. And then you played obviously a tough Northeastern team who was one of the top, who obviously went on to win hockey's. Just talk a little bit about that series and what did you take away from it and how are you going to use it to head into your sophomore year? Um, I think Northeastern is like one of those teams where, you know, they have so much talent. And I think like it's crazy sometimes like playing against them, the the speed and just skill that some of their players have. And um, I think that series was tough because, you know, we worked hard and I think we all like wanted to, make something out of it but we just couldn't get it done which was frustrating and obviously like you said just being stuck in eighth place is like I think it was just tough for us to kind of build and get momentum against them just because they are so fast so skilled um but you know I think at the end of the day it's kind of like that's how it's always going to be and we kind of have to learn how to deal with that and work with it and expect that it's coming um which is kind of like the key takeaway I think for me like going into my sophomore year yeah and you get to play with a lot of good players on Vermont as well one specifically is Val Caldwell we had her on the podcast a few weeks ago what's it like to play with so many talented players in your team that I feel like don't get enough recognition recognition as they should (laughs) yeah Val's awesome Val I don't think I know a single person who loves hockey more than Val Caldwell like that girl just shows up to the rink every day, like so happy to be there. And I think kind of her energy is just contagious. Like she's so, you know, you can just tell, like she wants to be there. She wants to improve. She wants to score goals. She has this knack for putting the puck in the net that I don't know how she does it, but she, she just pucks go off her stick and are in the net in like a matter of, you know, split second, like she is so good at finishing. And um, I think that's kind of like a characteristic about her that sometimes gets like swept under the rug, but she has a knack for finishing that is pretty like unique. Like I haven't seen a lot of people who can score goals like she does. Now you get to play in hockey East and there's many cool arenas. There's Matthews arena. There's obviously the heart center at Holy cross and the Gutterson field house at Vermont. What's your favorite road arena to play in um, that you've played in hockey East at least? Mm, that's a tough one um I honestly I think my favorite arena to play at last year was I think when we went to BU um I feel like they were just gritty there like their fan base like I was so funny they were chirping us the entire time the (laughs) band was chirping us like they are just gritty there but you know you kind of have to respect that it was pretty cool and they had like a pretty good crowd and um a really impressive band like it was just a very like fun atmosphere and like a fun um place to play at it's a cool rink but uh yeah I feel like that rink was pretty awesome did you get chirped specifically or was it just about the team no it was mostly stuff about our team but uh, you know fans had signs like they were serious it was funny yeah. it was, what was the cool. best trip you heard about your team um, I think they, someone had a sign about like I think I want to say it said like who wants to live in Vermont and then there was another one that said absolutely no one or something like it was it was funny and then there was something like chirping like Vermont's like taxes it was really funny yeah no that's cool I feel like there's not a lot of chirping that goes on at least from the fans at women's college hockey games because I know at men's college hockey games it's very intense like I went to UMass UConn game and the things that some people were saying it's like I would never (laughs) even say that to anybody so (laughs) I find it kind of cool that it could still happen in women's hockey as well. So it's respect. Yeah, for sure. No, I've never been to Walter Brown. Uh, I went to Aganis, which is where the men's team right. plays. So I was just cool, like how they separate, I guess, both arenas. But I, I, yeah. I want to go to a game uh, as soon as I can. But obviously, no one can go right now. Right. Now, we're now in the non-hockey segment of the podcast where I ask you some non-hockey questions. Now, my first one is, what music do you like to listen to before a game? Or what music do you just like to listen to in general? Oh, I'm a huge rap person. I'd 
that's kind of like all I listen to I feel like these days um definitely like my favorite thing to listen to like before games but um that's definitely my go-to when it comes to my Spotify now who's your go-to artist I know Playboy Cardi is potentially releasing an album this Friday I don't know about it we'll have to wait and see or Kanye I know he's pretty good in the rap game as well yeah I listen to both those I listen to a lot of Meek Mill, Drake, Future. I don't know. I think all three of those are good, but I feel like it's it's a variety. I mix it up. I seem to like the rappers with the name Baby in it. I love the Baby. <laughs> I love Lil Baby. They're all like really good. So that's the that's I more agree. my rap genre, I guess. My artist I go to. Now, <laughs> what is the biggest pet peeve you have? Hmm. I cannot stand when you open the door for someone and they don't say thank you. I think that's my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you in Vermont? Especially now with the mask, it's kind of hard to do that, I guess. It is weird, you know, like dealing with people. I think it's like, it's funny. It's, I feel less like connected, I think, with people <laughs> without a mask, but I'm sure it's happened to me here once or twice. Nothing I can think of specifically, but I'm sure. Now, what is your favorite outdoor activity? You're from, obviously, Michigan. There's a lot of stuff to do out there. Vermont, it seems like there's many things to do outside. What's your favorite outdoor activity, I guess? I think, so I, before coming to Vermont, like, I didn't do a ton of, like, kind of, like, hiking, nature stuff. But um, actually, my roommate, who I live with here at UVM, she is from Vermont, and she's, like, a huge, like, hiker. And um, I think she kind of because she's from Vermont like she was kind of able to show me around some pretty cool spots so we did uh which was one of actually the benefits of you know COVID kind of delaying our season like we got um pretty much like every weekend off in the early fall so and that time of year is just beautiful in Vermont so we did a ton of hiking like went to some like waterfalls and swimming holes and um stuff like that we hiked like the tallest mountain in Vermont um the tallest point but it was really cool getting to do that stuff. And then I would say when I'm home, um, both my brothers and me as well, like we all grew up playing soccer, like pretty competitively and pretty seriously as well. And uh, we like love like playing soccer at home and kind of like doing that. It's like my favorite thing to do before games as well. But um, yeah, I think we, that's like our favorite thing to do like outside playing hockey for sure. I guess for me, it's probably baseball or football, like if it's like a team sport. Um, football, flag football, I'm not doing tackling. I don't want to get hurt, especially <laughs> after playing years of hockey. But I think besides like individually, I like water outside activities like rowing or kayaking or doing stuff mm -hmm. on the beach. I don't know if you've ever got to do that, but you're from California, so I assume maybe. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we. that's another thing I love doing. Like I love traveling, and I got – I have tons of family still in California, so it's nice. Like we get to go see them and, you know, go to beaches there and um, go kayaking. Like we've done all kinds of, you know, hiking and exploring out there, which has been fun. And um, in Michigan, like we have a little like cabin on a lake and we love going there and fishing and, you know, being on the boat all day, but yeah, definitely a lot of fun in the summer. Now, speaking of food, what is the best food you've ever had or what meal would you like to have for the rest of your life? If you could choose any, I guess. Ooh, that's tough. I love cooking personally. So I did a lot of that over COVID also. Um, hmm. I love pasta. Pesto pasta would probably be my meal that I would eat for the rest of my life if I could. And what are some of the cool things you got to cook uh, during quarantine? I find that pretty interesting. Um, let me think. I did a lot of, made learned how to make sushi which was a lot of fun um it was kind of cool actually one of my teammates Lily Humphrey she is pretty into cooking as well and over quarantine like we would you know set up like FaceTime calls and we'd make like different meals over uh over the phone which is fun uh, I found a really good pad thai recipe that I made this summer that was really good I've made it a bunch since um learned how to make buffalo cauliflower that was really good um let me think what else I kind of got into cake decorating, which was kind of different, but I'm a pretty like artistic person and it kind of like combined my love for art and food. So it was kind of like fun for me to do that as well. But yeah. 
I can't say I'm the best at cooking. I know how to make mac and cheese out of a box or toast or something <laughs> like that, but I definitely got to work on that skill a little bit, especially since I get older when you start to live on your own. It's kind of important to learn. It also saves you money as well. So that's another. That is true. Thing. Now, I heard Vermont had like some like cooking competition on the Instagram over the summer. I think I remember seeing it. Did you win that? I feel like I'm starting to come back to me. <laughs> yeah, I did win that. Um, that was actually awesome because we basically did like this cook off between, you know, there were like two rounds where I defeated two of my teammates and like we had like a entree round, I think, an appetizer dessert round it was kind of fun and it was a good little like activity to keep us like connected over um, quarantine as well as kind of like engage our like social media fan base. And it was fun because in the final round, like we got to go or I went against Blake Bolden, who she is like an LA King scout. She like is a legend and like the women's hockey world, like she's so cool. And um, I kind of like got to know her through that and make that connection. And like, it was so fun doing that. And, Actually, a few months ago, she reached out to me and another kind of like side hobby I do is I like paint shoes and design shoes. And she actually reached out to me and asked if I would make her like an LA Kings themed pair. And I got to do that for her, which was like super fun. But yeah, it was definitely like a fun little summer activity for us. You should put that like in, like, if you ever tell someone about Blake Bolton, he's like, yeah, well, I'm at least better cook than she is. And I do that. (laughs) Right. That's one thing to talk to your friends about. (laughs) <laughs> now Definitely. i want to ask you some questions about your teammates uh who's the funniest teammate on vermont oh that's hard we have some clowns on our team i i think i would have to go with my teammate <laughs> elise murphy she's my stallmate, and that girl just like cracks me up like no other she's hilarious and just so fun to be around all the time now who has the best style on the team besides yourself oh best style Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, hmm. I really like my teammate Lily Humphrey style. She's like from California and kind of born and raised. And I think she kind of has like her own little unique style. And I like that she kind of doesn't really care like what other people wear. She kind of has her own personal thing going on. And I think she's awesome. She's fun, like cool style, like great personality. Like she's the best. That's awesome. Now I want to get back to some hockey questions. Uh, what do you think should be done to help grow women's hockey, especially since you've been in it so long? I think definitely kind of just, I think like availability is needs to be, I mean, I think when I was growing up, like there wasn't really like any girls hockey programs like available for me. Like I grew up playing boys, which I totally had like an awesome time doing and wouldn't change for the world because I think you develop a lot of skills and kind of a certain type of like toughness playing like guys hockey growing up but I think like I was always like the only girl like in my area playing hockey and I think um I wish there were kind of like more opportunities and there definitely are like even since just since I like grew up playing like you see so many more girls programs and girls camps and you know, USA Hockey has their, like, try hockey for free days, which um, I used to volunteer for all the time when I lived at home, but I think just, like, providing more opportunities for girls to have, like, a place to play and, you know, an opportunity to make friends and kind of just get on the ice and learn about the sport, I think, is super important. Yeah, especially when I'm just reflecting on my hockey days. We, I never played with any girls on any of my boys' hockey teams, so I think mm-hmm. that would definitely be something that hopefully USA hockey can try to, you know, make more girls programs so it can help uh, grow the sport, which I think is important. It's just also probably like platforms as well, like broadcasting on TV. Like I know Nesson is starting to broadcast more of the hockey East women's Mm -hmm. game. So if I think if they continue to do that, help grow the sport a little bit more in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Now you mentioned that your brother's kind of in the recruiting process as well, but do you have any advice for other younger players trying to pursue a D1 hockey career? I would definitely say like don't rush it because I feel like it's so cliche to say this but like just honestly like trusting the process because like I remember when I was kind of going through it like I remember seeing like my other friends like committing and stuff and you know getting offers and like I just wanted so bad to like you know be there and get to that point but you know I think like when it comes down to it like you can't really care about like you know what your friends 
parents and et cetera are saying, because at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to be there for four years of your life. Like it's your college experience and no one else's. And so I think like just taking the time to like actually really make sure you understand the decision you're making and um, just kind of like being patient and knowing that, you know, things will come and um, everyone kind of has, I think, a different path when it comes to recruiting. So I think just really like trusting the process and understanding that, you know, you have to be patient. And what should I do better as an interviewer to improve and make this podcast better? Oh, I had a blast. This was fun. Um, I think you had a really good array of questions, honestly. Like, I wouldn't change it. I think you're doing a great job. This was fun. Thank you. I really appreciate the kind words. Now, is there any shout outs you'd like to give to any of your teammates, uh, family members, or anyone else in particular? <laughs> oh, I don't think so. I think my whole team, shout out to all of them. Greatest group ever. I can't imagine being surrounded by better people. They're phenomenal. So shout out to them. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Cam, for coming on. I really appreciate it. This was so much fun getting the chance to meet and talk with you. I wish you all the best for this upcoming season with Vermont. And I just wanted to let you know that you're one of my favorite players to watch on Vermont. And I appreciate you coming on my podcast to talk about your athletic success. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Have a great day and a nice holiday as well. Thank you. You too. Bye. Take care.